Thank you for joining us again for another episode of AJ and 8. This week we were going through a lot of the subjects that people have been asking about and one of the big things that kept coming up were about integrating energy solutions into their buildings, especially on the commercial and industrial side and the high capex or capital expenditure costs involved with doing some of these integrations and upgrades. And then another thing that they talked about was, you know, how do we even know which of these energy solutions, whether it be solar, solar plus storage, uh, microgrid, what, you know, which of these are going to be the best solution for our company, for our business, for our building, whatever that, that may look like for, for these people. And, you know, what I think the, the thing that kept coming up for us as a company was, you know, really uh, looking at energy as a service as an opportunity for us to help move this transition forward. You know, so I think that's what we really want to focus on in today's episode is really, you know, what does energy as a service, what does that look like? And right now when we talk about energy as, as a service you know there's there's different variables i mean some people may look at it similar to that of say the solar city scenario where you know they will come to your home and look at your usage and then say hey you know we'll go ahead and pay for all of this stuff to go on your roof we'll take all the tax credits and do all the the benefits that are associated with that but we'll pay for it all so you as a homeowner you don't have to come up with that capital expenditure whether it be out of your own pocket or th through getting a loan um, it allows you to be able to enjoy the benefit of a reduced utility cost without having to pay for the capital costs to introduce this new solution onto your home but i think it goes beyond that you know because a lot of our residential customers that's what they're excited about was oh i got to get so solar i got a reduction in my utility cost and i didn't even have to pay anything for it you know sunrun came and just did this whole thing so you know those are really good but i think some people miss the other benefits of no o m operations and maintenance to be able to have another entity be uh, responsible to ensure that you've got proper uptime to make sure everything is working properly and all of the things associated with that. So that's also another big opportunity. And then to me, the the one of the bigger opportunities that very few people look at is passing the risk on to somebody else. You know, especially now when we get into the re the commercial and industrial side. If you do this right, there's usually uh, performance guarantee. There's, it's, it's usually a performance-based energy service contract that, that really comes into play. So, you know, that's kind of where I want to continue to move down because, you know, I think everybody understands the, let's call it energy as a service for the residential side, you know, the solar city, sun run scenario. But what we're looking at now is as the commercial and industrial sites are becoming more aware of the needs and the growing needs of the commercial and industrial section. We're, we're trying to figure out how we can do this without having to expend so much of our capital expenditure. And that's a real big scenario, especially because now with COVID-19 and, and everybody really clamping down on on the monies, it's, it's definitely something that we should look at. So when we integrate energy as a service, you know, we, we look at the solution of being able to bring advisory services. Um, we're looking at bringing supply, making sure that the right equipment is there, making sure that there's efficiencies that are related to these upgrades, making sure that the system is optimized. And then the most important part that you've got the right financing and contract structuring in place, right? Now the benefits, of an energy as a service contract, you know, go far and wide. But the ones that I look at is, you know, cost savings and predictability, right? Being able to know that there is going to be a savings and the fact that there's performance guarantees usually behind these, you can actually have some predictability as you continue to, to expand, grow, move your business and evolve. Um, the other one that I spoke about was risk mitigation. To be able to pass this off to an entity that understands what they're doing, being able to pass that risk to someone else 
that is really dealing with that part of the business is really a good thing. Um, another thing is infrastructure upgrades. You know, many people know that when you add solar or other infrastructure upgrades to you know, to your building, whether it be upgraded lights or you know upgraded HVAC systems, it, it creates a lot of good benefits. Uh, another benefit is resilience and reliability. Now, that's a big thing that we look at. Is you know, if if you're a business and all you're doing is putting solar in California, public safety power shutoffs are becoming a norm. So being able to have a microgrid come in with an energy as a service contract, you add that added benefit of resilience, reliability, ensuring continuity, business continuity. Um, another benefit is sustainability, to be able to know that you are getting closer to your sustainability goals as a company, as a community, as a state. And then obviously, the most important thing that everybody talks about is efficiencies, right? So, um, and when I look at this, you know, it's it's becoming even more prevalent, you know, as as I consult with more and more companies, whether it be the actual end use customer or I get brought in by a solar installer, EPC, ESCO to come in and take a look at their design and and the way things are. Um, what I'm finding out is, you know, so let, let's let's take a look at the core competency. Okay, if you were to go ahead and upgrade the counters in your home, I believe you've got the competency to be able to decide which contractor, which materials and what to do to replace the countertops in your home. But to be able to say, hey, which of these three contracts should I choose to put on a microgrid on my building? There's very few people that have the ability to dissect all of the complexities of these proposals from three different contractors on whether or not their bid and their proposal for a microgrid is going to be appropriate for your building. So you really need to be able to figure out how best to do it. And, and I'll be upfront, most of the companies that we look at, they go ahead and get three bids and then they don't have the ability to determine which one is right. So what did they use? They use price, and Yelp reviews. I mean, there's really nothing else. How else are you supposed to determine whether or not this guy's proposal is going to be able to keep the lights on if you don't know what equipment he's using, if you don't know what questions to ask? So energy as a service creates more predictability, more risk mitigation. And again, you're moving CapEx to OpEx. Guys, this is one of the future opportunities that we have to help get us to more microgrids. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Allah.